Order. Can I get a second on that? Second. And we'll start with our roll call vote. Uh, um, one second. I'm Mike. Sorry, what's that? Uh, is Alicia on? Yep. Yes. I'm here. Oh, great. I didn't I miss you. I'm sorry. When, otherwise, Thanks. I have to take notes. Thanks for caring. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Michael. No problem. Mr. Murray uh, called me a little while ago. He's got some personal stuff to do tonight. He may try to jump on later on, um, but he's not sure he's going to make it on tonight or not. So uh, we'll start with Mr. Kelly. We've got Mr. Kelly on. Howie. Dave Sinkowski, Dave Friedman, yeah. Craig, um, I saw Craig on, yeah. Tucker, any Tucker? I don't see Tucker. How about Steve Gard? Or Dave Haley? Nope. And we got Stephen Moan. Hello, Moto. Maura Curran, and we've got Alicia. And what about Andrew? Um, some cold sedation. I don't think he's on. All right. All right, good. Were you able to get that, Alicia? You good? Okay, yeah. All right, with that, um, does everyone get a chance to review the agenda? Can I get a motion uh, to accept the agenda or? Yep. Second. Thank you. And as you know, we have to do a roll call vote, vote on that, so I'm just going to speed around this. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Howie? Yes. Dave? Yes. yes. Friedman. Yeah. Craig. Yes. Stephen. Yes. All right. Great. And next, we have the acceptance of the minutes for April. Uh, have you guys get a chance to review them? I know we got them a little bit late to you, but did anyone get a chance to review them, or does anyone have any changes? Alicia, do you see those minor changes that I emailed you? I didn't. Uh, I emailed you about uh, two or three o'clock. Minor, so minor. I, okay. Uh, look, my email's not coming through very quickly, so I will. Yeah, they were they were not significant. It was just on the uh, on the small vessel notes. Okay. There were a couple minor, minor changes. We can approve them as is, and I think she can make those changes without a separate vote. Um, Michael, I do have one change. Okay, go ahead, Brian. Thank you. So, Alicia, on the financial update, uh, while I might have said something similar to this, where it says uh, in the first sentence that if uh, um, that I'm going to wait until the current cycle is complete to have visibility of this year's revenues, and yep. we'll take a proctology exam, I think. <laughs> I think maybe a small <laughs> exam would work better than <laughs> what exam? <laughs> <laughs> you did say that, Brian. I might have said it. Not might. Alicia records this. You said it. Right? I might have said that. Absolutely. So we could change the word proctology to a fellow. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brian, I didn't even see that. That'll teach you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Alicia. I guess watch um, what you say, right? Yeah. Alicia? Yep. This is Stephen Moan. It, um, when I'm talking about the piling project, yep. uh, piling. about halfway down, it said, Harvester Moan explained that the pilings at the end of the fingers have been launching and the crane bars will come out next. Not even sure what that is. Crane and barge is probably what it's supposed to be. Crane. Yeah, and barge. I don't know what the one, you know. <laughs> Our most remote explained that the fingers have been the have been launching the fingers. That's what it is. Fingers launching. have been launched. 
they have been launching uh, Harmester Moon, the pilings at the end of the fingers have been launching the fingers. It said have been, have been launched. Okay, it's fine. So the fingers have been launched. Just change it to have been. They have been launching the fingers. Okay. Have all right. All right. Yep. And then the crane barge. Yes. I think Mike was right. I think that's supposed to be crane barge. Was you, I think you had mentioned something about the crane and barge were going to be exiting the marina from inside the marina. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. Yep. Got it. All right. Anyone else with anything? You had gotten what I'd sent over, Alicia. On. Yes, I yeah. changed those. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So can I get a motion to accept the minutes as amended from the April meeting? So moved. Second. Second, thank you. And with this, we also have to do a roll call vote. So Mr. Kelly. Yes. Howie. Yes. Dave. Sinkowski, yes. Mr. Friedman. Yes. Craig. Yep. And Mr. Moan. Yes. And I'm an I as well, in case you forget me, so. Mm -hmm. All right, we're good. Thank you, Alicia, on that. Um, Mr. Stephen Moan for your Harbor Master Report. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with the Cole, Pile, Cole Parkway Marina Pile Project. Uh, we are on time and on schedule and on budget. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Crowd goes wild. Um, if, you had yeah. asked, if, if you had asked me two months ago, I, I would have never thought we would have been on time or on budget based on how the thing started, so I'm happy. Well, we are on time and on budget and on schedule. So we are moving right along. Um, all the pilings are in. Um, they have three pile caps to put on at Cole Parkway at the Maritime Center. They have to put the pile caps on. They do that at high tide because they have to move a boat around with a um, staging to get up on top. Um, that should be done, weather permitted, by the end of this week. Um, the electrical system should be done by the end of this week. The electricians have been working every day. Uh, the other day on uh, Monday and Tuesday, they had to leave a little bit early because of the tide. They weren't able to work on the, um, the stone, you know, the riprap <clears throat> because the tide had come in on them. Uh, but they were there today and they have all the conductors in the stainless steel cabinet. They're making those up as we speak or um, the new GFCI system that takes care of the whole marina um, is, has been installed. And uh, once they energize, they're gonna go throughout the marina and test each of the devices at the pedestals to make sure that everything's operational. <clears throat> the water lines have all been hooked up. Um, C. White is gonna pressure it. They have run water through the system and the water's working, they're going to pressurize the system to make sure that there's no leaks. Um, and they plan on doing that by the end of this week as well. The uh, one holdup has been the sewer line, um, but we have come to a, a resolution with that. Um, we're going to have um, the town's plumber go out and uh, bring the sewer line <coughs> up through the uh, off to the side near the electric box. And um, he's gonna come up through the concrete and then the sewer line will have a, a shut off right at the top of the gangway, off to the side, obviously. And that's where the sewer line ha will have a seasonal connection for the pump out station. Um, so uh, that's that should be done. Uh, we're probably gonna wait until uh, the contractors 
kind of out of that area so we're not tripping over him. Uh, but that will be done uh, within probably a, a day or two of the marina opening, if not prior to. Um, the contractor is now working on the deck, uh, the observation deck. They have the piles in, they have uh, the joists that are going across. They'll be setting that, the deck in place uh, probably tomorrow. They had it, most of it put together in the parking lot. Um, so that's moving along. Um, we did go over a punch list uh, of some sorts today with the contractor. You know, uh, there wasn't a whole lot, and it was just stuff that was fairly obvious, like the pile caps and checking the electric system, checking the water lines for leaks, et cetera, at our construction meeting. Uh, as he gets closer, there was nothing glaring in the punch list, you know, nothing that is would require anything major uh, that, that we saw. So the project's moving along very well. Um, everybody's very pleased with it. The gangway is spectacular. Um, and that's where we stand with the coal pile project. Does anybody have any questions? How big is that viewing area, Steve? Uh, I think it's like 15 by 15. Great idea. And a, just a couple questions regarding, so do we think by the 15th opening day that they'll be done with everything or? You know, the you only just... thing they won't be done with is the viewing stand and it'll be constructed. We're waiting on the uh, mesh fencing that goes around it. So that will be closed off. The, the handrail is gonna go back in place and be welded back in place so that you cannot access the viewing stand. Um, and once the, um, the stainless steel fencing that goes around it to keep people from falling off the side is installed, then it'll be removed. Okay. Is there any, any... It, was a, it was a COVID, there was a, a shutdown at the factory. Um, so it's kind of pushed their whole schedule back. Okay. What about? Um... But that's that that should not affect the marina, you know, uh, at all. Um, also, um, there's a retainage on the in the contract, so you know they'll come back to get that. Trust me. So it'll be yeah. completed. Do you recall what the retainage percentage is? I believe it's five percent. Five percent. Either okay. five or seven. Yes. Yeah. Um, the parking lot there where the barriers are, I haven't been down since last week. But is there a schedule for when that stuff is when they're supposed the, to be out of there with that? They're going to start taking the fencing down on Friday. I yeah. and I um, I'm working with um, DPW to move the Jersey barriers that the town will now own, um, and. A lot of the Jersey barriers will be removed, but what we will do is we're going to take the Jersey barriers, some of them, and kind of go around the area where the mooring stones are, uh, because the plan is to, if the selectmen deem it a surplus property, we're, uh, I believe, going to put it on the auction site to see if we can um, auction it off. If not, we'll see if we can, you know, find a possibly another municipality or, you know, uh, somewhere else that we can use them. For the mooring stones, Stephen? Yes, for the mooring stones. So they're no longer going to Peggotty Beach? No, they're, they're not. Uh, okay. DPW, uh, Kevin Cafferty had decided that, you know, they they wouldn't really work out there. And they've just okay. paved the whole parking lot, so. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so those will remain there. You're just going to block them off with the barricades until... Yeah, it, it'll, they're in like... Yeah. four or five parking spots and that's where they'll stay kind of until the auction's held and um, and depending on I, I did reach out to all the mooring inspectors today uh, saying that the town is planning on auctioning those off and I was going to reach out to you know uh, you know let everybody know that they are, they would be becoming available okay. through that auction site and at the same time we're going to be auctioning off the old unit three and the old pump out boat. Um, and 
and uh, several other items. And I believe the town may be auctioning off uh, some equipment at DPW as well. Okay. Good. Any other questions from the group regarding the project itself or the audience? Oh, it sounds like it went great. I think it did. Yeah. You know, Mr. Kelly. So, St Stephen, are you going to touch on the Maritime Center separately, or are we moving off of this the piling projects? Uh, I can touch on the Maritime Center if you'd like. Sure. Um, so, the Maritime Center was. Um, put in in, I believe, 2008 or 2010. Um, there was some original permits pulled for that project that included to hold that um, marina in place by chain and stone. And it's my understanding that uh, at some point they decided there was a reconfiguration zone over there. So they, at some point um, it was decided to either try mooring piles or mooring piles became available and they opted to switch to mooring piles. DEP was notified uh, of the change and they got the permit for that, but Army Corps of Engineers was never notified uh, of the change. Um, and I'm guessing because Mark had a reconfiguration zone he believed that the Army Corps did not need to be contacted because if you stay within your, your original square footage and you stay, if it had piles originally, wooden piles, and we just, you know, replace them, it, you don't have to go back to the Corps because they already know they're there. But since they changed from mooring chain and stone to piles, they would have had to have notified the Corps. Um, so we are correcting that permit. Um, and we, we had come across that issue because when we submitted to DEP to change to the, um, you know, pull the old pilings out and put the new ones in, they had no issue because it was permitted. Uh, conservation, um, they had no issues. Um, then when we went forward to get the six additional piles, we knew that we had to contact the Army Corps of Engineers. So as soon as we contacted the Army Corps of Engineers and said, we'd like to add six additional piles to our, our project, that's when they said, we started looking through the file and there was no permit pulled with the Army Corps for the pilings. They believed that it was just chain and stone still. still. Uh, at this point, the Army Corps it's my understanding that they are okay with the new the piles, um, but it did get elevated to fish and wildlife. And the reason it got to elevated to fish and wildlife is because we were the six additional piles that we planned on putting in were steel. So, and uh, they wanted to make sure that we are uh, installing them in a manner as not to disturb fish or shellfish with the pounding, with the noise. Uh, about 100 feet from where we're putting the other metal pilings in. But we got a permit for the metal piles across the way. They have two different marinas. Got it. No, I got it. I got it. I'm not, uh, this is the Army Corps of Engineers. You know, they're not a group to really, uh, I'm trying to correct the mistakes of the past. Um, and, yeah. you know, we... So if I can cut to the chase in this, so you notified Army Corps of Engineer when, like a couple months ago? Yes. When do we expect to hear back from them that we might be able to move forward over there? They have told us that they don't have an issue with the steel piles. However, it has now been moved up to Fish and Wildlife, and it's about eight weeks. Eight weeks from, from now? Probably two and a half weeks, two weeks ago. So it's probably six weeks left. The, okay. the barges have already left. The additional piles aren't going in in right. this go round. Um, so, so what are we doing with those pilings? They've gone, they were an option with the contractor. 
So we're getting a credit for those. So we're not going to do this anytime soon, obviously. We are waiting for, you know, we're waiting for the permits. Mm -hmm. But once we get the permits, we've got to go back and get a dredger and we've got to acquire the no, pile. a dredger. You, you have to get an ins a piling installer and put the piles in. Right. The barges have left, they left last week. They had to go to other projects. Yeah. So wouldn't if, if, if this was done, if the Maritime Center was done correctly in 2010 and the Army Corps was notified of the pilings, we would have just gone back for the six piles and we, we it would yeah. not have been elevated to fish and wildlife because, you know, there would have been orders in place about putting them in in a certain manner. But since yeah, it I wasn't, guess that. it had to go back to them. I get that. I'm just trying to figure out we're really in a situation where we're not going to be able to do this anytime soon because now we have to go through the process of getting this permit. Once we do, then we got to reacquire the pilings and also have the necessary equipment to install it, correct? Uh, yeah, you, okay. that is correct. No, I'm just, I was counting on that revenue for the additional boats, uh, for the additional slips uh, in our projections. And now I'll just wipe that out because that's not anything that's going to happen anytime soon. The Correct. best case would be off season, Brian, before we could even do that with, you can't do it during the season, so. Correct, I, no, no, I wasn't talking about year one, Mike. I'm, I'm thinking this is something that we're not gonna see for three right. or four at the earliest, okay. I mean, the so I big issue. This, but wouldn't, the, wouldn't the piling drivers, wouldn't they have to review permits before they start driving piles, Stephen? They did, DEP. Be because we had a permit in place with DEP. Yeah. Okay. Everyone was under the belief that it, you, you had a consultant or somebody working on this project in the past that obviously went to DEP yeah. to get it originally permitted. Yeah. And at that point, you're not just going to go to one agency, you're going to go to all of them. But if you go to make a change in the future, you don't have to go to the other agencies as long as you're putting the same amount of square footage and you can rearrange the square footage. I can pull out piles and move them around. I can, I just have to go back and notify DEP and conservation. It's just a notification. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse in this, but why didn't our project manager that we're paying a lot of money, Berugian, catch this from July? Because there was no reason when this project first started to contact the Army Corps because nothing was changed. The permit, we had the permit from, um, to do this project. The only thing we didn't have was for piles, all right? Nobody, you know, looked in to say, oh, is there supposed to be piles? Are they supposed to be, you know, is it chain and stone over here? Nobody expected it to be chain and stone. It was done, done wrong 11 years ago. And the only agency they needed to go to to speak with was DEP and conservation. And that's yeah. what they did. Yeah. What triggered it is when we went and asked for the additional piles. Then they knew that because they're having additional piles, they have to notify the Army Corps. And at that point, the Corps said, we don't have you having piles we have you having chain and stone because yeah. when it was done, nobody, when, when they switched it, it in 2010 or 11, it. they didn't tell anybody or they didn't tell the proper agencies. Can I have a question since all the pilings at Citra Marine Park uh, are awaiting permitting, why didn't we just drive the other six piles and, and do everything at once. Because I'm not going to antagonize the Army Corps and I'm not going to create a problem. We found out there was a problem. We weren't talking about the additional piles at the time and I'm not going to make things worse than they already are. So when we go to get a dredge permit or another issue or another, another permit for something else and, and they say, well, these are the guys that just kind of do whatever they want. 
they already knew that we were trying to get the six additional piles because we asked them. I'm not just going to drive them without their permission. No, no, no. I appreciate that. What I'm saying is, at the Marine Park, the uh, we are we already put more pilings in than we had initially. So no, we've we already didn't. exceeded the excessive piles. Why not do another six? I mean, we've already <laughs> added we, piles that they, they're not aware of and, and we're trying to permit, but why not put the other six in and, and call it a night? That's, that's my point. I'm, I, I appreciate Howie, not antagonizing them. We, put, we took 20 piles out and we put 20 piles in because that was what was on the permit, 20 piles. Then we asked for six additional because we thought we had five extra piles. And I thought at some point I'd put the sixth one in down the road when somebody else was working in the area. When we found out we didn't have an Army Corps permit, we went to get the permit for the six additional piles. At that point, the Army Corps had it under review and I was not going to add the six additional piles without their permission. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, any additional questions on that from anyone? Oh. All right, thank you for the update. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. And, yeah. and it's more of a, uh, it's a quick question. So Stephen, the new pilings have been put in and they're um, taller, for want of a better word, than the prior ones. So when we have the storm tides that we had back during Storm Riley, we're not going to have you over there um, trying to hold the hoops onto the uh, pilings, correct? That is, That was one of the main reasons we put them there, was they were too short, nobody knew, you know, too short height-wise. Uh, nobody knew how far down they went. Nobody really knew there was not, a, you know, <clears throat> we didn't have much history on the actual product. So, no, I want to know is that, do we have three more feet, five more feet? What do we have? Yeah, I, I believe it, it might be eight more feet. Eight more feet. And yeah. is this all documented somewhere? So when 10 years from now or 15 years from now, somebody decides to do something else, they're not going to find out, oops, shit, there's a problem. No, that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Okay. So I have all the documentation in order. Thank you. Sorry, Mike. Thank you. No problem. No yeah. worries. It was a good question, Brian. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda, we get river updates. Any river updates? I know last time mm -hmm. you said you had get all the nav aids in. Nav aids are in, and um, Russ Clark is working on the slow no wake buoys. Um, yep. Myself, Mike DeMeo, and uh, the North South River Shed Association had a Zoom call. Um, they purchased a couple of new larger no wake buoys to replace the no wake buoys at the, the mouth of the North North River, North North South River intersect. Um, Mike DeMeo ordered those for them and they will. Uh, pay for them through Mike DeMeo's office. And once they're delivered, they will be installed at the entrance. Um, but there are other no-wake no buoys that are being installed uh, in the North and South River. I had bought I think, six last year or seven that I put in the, had installed in the South River and Mike was taking care of the North River. I put two signs at um, Damon's Point on the situate side on the pile um, that say no wake in the river. Um, so we're getting everything in order down there. I have to order one replacement aid to navigation. That's great. Yeah. Um, we had received a couple phone calls regarding river patrols and, um, I guess the ask was that, that between Situate Marshfield and Situate Police and Coast Guard, as the season went on, you know, there was the need was really ramped up and the patrols increased significantly. The ask that I specifically got calls on was, 
to make sure that that starts earlier this year, just to get on top of it. Um, Our plan is to start immediately out in that area, along with Marshfield, Situate Police. Um, the Coast Guard is not on site yet, uh, but when they get down here, that'll be something we discuss with them as well. So we'll be working together as we did last year and uh, be moving throughout the river um, because, you know, sitting in one location for several hours, everybody knows where you're at. And as soon as they get around the corner, they take off again. So uh, the, our boat is uh, getting ready and it will be launched and uh, left in the river for us to do our patrols in the, our rib that we have down there. Um, Marshfield to have their boat down there and then Situate will come in with their, um, their safe boat. So we plan on, you know, getting right out there right away and letting everybody know that we're here and we're here until the end of the season. Yeah, that, I think that'll help to kind of nip things in the bud before people get the idea, especially the newer boaters, that they can just fly around if they see that's, presence that's there. a free-for-all. <laughs> what is yeah. the, Stephen, what we is don't the, want the free-for-all. What, what is the penalty for uh, probably, what is there, a warning first, then a ticket? How, how does that all work? It's a warning first, a, a verbal warning, uh, then it would be a written warning, and then it would be a citation. And how much are the citations? Uh, they are fifty dollars. It's state. It, this is all state mandated. Do they graduate up after so many infractions? No. No. Okay. Fifty dollars. Thank you. Hey, Brad, you can fly up and down the river all you want, right? Fifty bucks each time. Hey, it's like a carnival ride. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyone else want to chime in on that? Hey, Mike, it's uh, Brian Cronin. Um, hey, Brian. Hey, uh, I just, Stephen, if it, it, that's great. You know, and because last year it kind of got out of control down the rivers and around the spit. So I think starting off strong, the, the signage, I don't really, I think people see the signs and ignore them, but starting off strong with a continued presence through the, the whole summer will really help. And, and, and that includes like a dusk. Um, I think people, when they're heading back from, from uh, restaurants and stuff like that, right before dark, there's a lot of, um, you know, just people continue just speeding up the entire river and get to their destination before it gets dark. So uh, I just, I think, um, you know, I, I, you have, sounds like you have a coordinated plan with the other agencies. So I, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it in action. Well, the reason for the additional buoys is so that when they say we didn't know, I can point to one here or one to there. <laughs> yeah. say they're all over the place. Uh, good point. And I do think that's ex ex exceptionally important with a lot of new boaters that are out there, right? They just don't even know, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. All right, if there's nothing, no other comments on that, I'd like to move towards the next item on the agenda, which is, I just put down 2021 season start, right? Start of the season, because I know last year you had sent out some notices to the Marina patrons and the people in the, on the moorings, just letting them know of any changes and readiness for the Marina. So it was just kind of a little bit of a reminder on that. Then I know we had an open item um, that we discussed last month on restrooms. So I just wanted to circle back on that with you. Well, I have some very good news. As of May 15th, the bathrooms will be open, uh, both the, uh, the restrooms and the showers. Uh, there will, however, be no loitering in the building. So you'll have to come in, um, put your mask up, go to the restroom or the shower, take care of business and turn around and head out. Um, not sitting on the couches and you know, mm -hmm. mingling and loitering. So we just want to kind of keep people in and out of there just for the bathrooms. Any business would be done back on the other side through the front door. Maybe remove the couches. Well, that's good news, Stephen, that we have the restrooms back open. That's good. All right. Other, other than that, readiness in general for the season with regards to everything, pretty much ready to go, boats, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah we're in good shape. Uh, the new boat should be going in, I think, in the next day or two, or maybe Monday. Um, they're they've been working um, pretty steadily on the fire pump, um, and it's it's mounted down, it's wired up, so it's really moving right along. They just got to clean. They got to vacuum out that bilge. It was like you could eat out of it. Now it's got sawdust everywhere and fiberglass dust. It's. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All right. Any questions from the public or from the board on any of that stuff? I had one question, uh, Steve. How would uh, payments coming in? You know, regarding moorings and slips and any any non-payers. Any. You know, yeah, we had about. Slips? We had about 20 outstanding. We, I think we have about 10 now. Okay. And what you're obviously in contact with those people. We, we sent out invoices, email, we sent out paper invoices. So, so those 10, when, when would those slips or, or are those slip holders or moorings probably? Mooring, mooring holders. Yeah. And what would the process be? I mean, uh, for them On May 15th, if, if they have not paid, they'll lose their mooring. Okay, so 10 days, yeah. $100 late fee. Good question, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it, thanks. All right, thank you. I see not, no one else has a hand up or anything, so uh, can move to Jericho, this is also a leftover item from last month's call, the Jericho ramp porta potty. Brad, I believe you were asking about that one, and then the Conservation Park porta potty. So we, we took an action item last month to look into ownership, and I was inform, informed by the town, I believe it's the DPW that, that uh, has been paying for and putting the one at the conservation park I call it um, driftway ramp so that one is is there correct yeah. Brad? Uh, yes it's there uh, it continues to be a catch-all for uh, um, <clears throat> bottles uh, submarine and pizza boxes and just really gross inside so what they do is they haven't changed that bouse house. What they do is they mark on the inside the date that they were there. Mm -hmm. And since our last call, I think the day before they cleaned it up, but they should really just take the whole thing away and put a new one there with newer technology in my opinion. But uh, uh, it's it's a tough one to, to manage because that pump company comes however frequent and maybe it's once a week or once every two weeks. And there are some real, uh, uh, some real people with nasty manners down there, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> stuff on the walls, uh, it just gets pretty gross. So, um, you know, that's somebody's job. They're not doing it. And then hopefully, did you find any resolution to Jericho Road? Jericho Road is an interesting one. So I'm going to ask the audience in this one. So Jericho Road, the town has no record that they could find of the town paying for the porta potty over there. Um, so we went to them, they have no record of it. So we don't know, if, you know, I don't recall actually seeing one over there. So I'm not sure where it was. I have photographs and archives just from the ramp and the events that we sometimes do there. They can show, but I can't believe somebody's got amnesia about a porta potty that's been there for many years. Um, well, there's always the possibility that it was the state that was providing that. I kind of, doubt it but um town hall you know did not could not find anything on that or find that they were paying for that in the past either so well, my suggestion would be and this has been going back till august and july of last year is it's a sanitary problem and maybe the board of health needs to be involved but i mean we're talking about this every single month i mean we can send a helicopter to mars but we can't get a bouse house at jericho road and um uh, it's really, uh, it's sad, it's dirty, it's gross, and people are urinating in public, period. So is the issue, is there one there now, or there isn't one? It was taken away. It was taken away probably back in July. Maybe it was a COVID thing, who knows? But uh, I don't know if you look at the notes here, going back maybe to June, 
started talking about it because it was gone. What, was it just temporarily there last year, Brad, or was it no, there it's prior been years? It's been there for years. Been there for years. <clears throat> You know, even if there never was one there, but yeah. it's obviously, as Brad had brought up, it's it's necessary. It's our most uh, busy ramp we have. Uh, it's kind of a shame that you know we don't have something there. We if we should we should put ourselves forward here and make a decision right. to, to drive Let, it home. Let's do this. So since we know that the DPWs taking care of the one at the conservation park, the one I call the conservation park in the driftway, perhaps we could ask them to put one there at the Jericho ramp? Yes, right up by the, uh, uh, where uh, Ethan puts the uh, life jacket tree. Sure, yeah, and yeah. It, it, it lived right there and it was level and everything worked. And I hate to keep bringing this up every month because there are more important things to talk about, but. Yeah, uh, it was something that was brought up, so we're trying to address it, so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Anyone from the board want to take that on as an action item before next meeting to see if they could reach out to DPW and just see if it's possible to get one there? Maura, could you find that out maybe? Hold on one sec. I was making sure I was on mute, was not on mute. Yes, I'm typing an email right now in response to Mike's, um, to Mike's email to Nancy this morning. So I'm doing it right now. All right. Thank you, Maura. That's great. Yeah. All right, so um, we will follow up on that next month and wait to hear back on that. And uh, Stephen, did you have anything else on your report or is there any, anything else you wanted to cover? No, um, that's, uh, I think that, you know, we're moving right along. I mean, we're going to be open on time. Um, okay. It's busy. You know, so. Okay. All right, with no hands up from anyone else, I'd like to move towards uh, to the next item on the agenda, which is old business. And the first one was carryover from last month's meeting on Harbor Dredge permitting. So um, you had gotten an update from us, Stephen, on an action item from last month. So I'll just get you, let you go with that regarding Nancy. Steven? Frozen. It's frozen. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll try to jump in here. We'll see if we can see if we can get Steven on frozen. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to wake him up. <laughs> hey, Mike, I've got to jump. Thanks. Good night, everybody. See you, Brad. All right. Good night, Brad. The cardboard got out. We caught him. We got him, right? Yeah. yeah. I did. Um, so I'll try to jump in here and kind of uh, what Stephen had, we asked him to do last month was to check to see if we can use the money that was already allocated for a uh, comprehensive dredge permit and use that for dredge permitting for the harbor itself because we determined that's our priority, right? And then we wanted to get that done. Um, there was, and I hate to put, words into his mouth, but what he had told me is that that was permissible and that we can do that and go to RFP um, for dredge permits for the harbor. So um, I guess we'll wait a minute to see if Stephen jumps back in here. And while, while we're waiting, does anyone have any discussion or questions on that? And we'll see if I can answer them. So what would the process be? Just, you don't have to go out to bid again. Was that it? I would say you would have to go back to bid, for, form an RFP to reduce the scope instead of a comprehensive dredge permit for all of Situate Waters. It would be a dredge permit for um, I would say we'd probably ask for the inner harbor, right, and the outer harbor or some sort of, you know, breakout so that when we get pricing back for it, for the RFP, we can say, yeah, either both fit onto what we have available for funding to permit it, or one of them, one of them does, one of them doesn't, and we take the priority and do it that way and spend the money. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
And Brian, where, I mean, we have no idea how much dredging costs, right? I mean, you know how much it costs in the river, but that was probably, I guess, more expensive than what it might be in the harbor. I'm just guessing, but, you know, what do we have in the financial forecast, Brian, for dredging over the next five years? Anything? Uh, we have very little. We, we've got obviously existing um, funds that are paying for completed dredging. Mm. Dredging, I believe we've uh, squirreled away somewhere around 200,000. Um, however, that's not nearly going to do all the waterways. So depending upon what we have, there's, there's, obviously there's a two-step process. The first step is paying for the um, engineering study. And then the second process step would be to put it out a second RFP, not related to the first, uh, to get quotes to have people to come in and do that associated dredging, whatever. Mm. So we don't yeah. have anything for the second part. Exactly right. Yeah. So this is just for the permitting, Dave, right? So right, the, right. permitting in place, then you can go out and say, okay, here's the areas on the north side of the marine park that we have dubbed as priorities, the area where the Lobstermen's Association is, that corner that abuts the marina. Um, there may be one or two other spots. So we're not talking about whole harbor dredge, although we're getting permits, right? We're looking for permits for that. But when it comes to dredging, then you figure out what you need to do in what areas and then put right, that I, out. The price yeah, I understood that. I was just going one step ahead, you know, assuming we have enough money um, approved by town meeting for the engineering, for the permitting, for the harbor, we would hope we do, you know, can't be that bad an estimate. Um, yeah. That, you know, so, let's say that gets done this fall. The question would be, when yeah. do we, you know, how much money would we need to then ask town meeting for, for dredging? And hopefully in that engineering permit, it might have some inkling of a, of a budget. Um, Cause we have to figure out how much we need to dredge, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. So I believe it would, uh, Dave, yeah. Mike, if you don't mind if I just interjected. And a lot of it has to do with the time that we do it. So, for example, on the uh, North River dredging, North South River dredging project that we did um, back two years ago, the first bid um, came in at 1.6 million, and that was to do it off season. And we we didn't, both towns didn't have that much money squirreled away, plus the, the grant from the state. When we decided to do it in season, I believe we did it the last week of July and the first two weeks of August, if memory serves me correct, uh, the, the quote came down 500,000. So a lot of it will also be contingent upon when we do it and their availability. So it's a supply demand type of thing. I agree, but I, I, and Steve's not on to, but a lot of boaters are on right now in yeah. the harbor doing dredging during the season might be no, no, no. near impossible. I got, <laughs> I got it. What I'm saying is if we do it at the end of the season, like in the late October versus right. it, for example, in January. Yeah. Um, yeah, they get that's always done right. off, off season. So. Right. so it depends upon when we do it, because I just wanted to point out there was that million dollar swing on that one project, yeah. which came in finally at 1-1. One, one. Totally, yeah. right? Right. Steven is texting me. He's trying to get back on. He had to reboot, reboot his uh, Wi-Fi. Okay. Get on. Like, I don't know if we have a, if we, if we can do this. If I can take a quick segue on old business, it's not on the agenda. So slap me if I'm not allowed to go there, but I just wanted to circle up and see from Maura if she was aware of the South River dredging um, letter that was sent to Jim Boudreau regarding the waterways voting unanimously not to move forward with South River dredging. I just, I just saw it on Monday. Pardon me? I just saw it on Monday, right? This past Monday? That's correct. Yeah, I, I yeah. copied you on it, Laura. Yep, yes. I did see it. Okay, yep. I just wanted to make sure you were in the loop on that. Yep, I saw it and um, yeah, 
Yeah, so that while we're talking about both, letters, right, I just, just want to tell David too, David Daphne, your letter was fabulous. Thank you. So hopefully you got a response from our office. I hope you did. You didn't? No response. Okay. We asked for one, so we'll I'll follow up on that. That's okay. So I Brian. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure you know knew it was. Yep. Thank you. So Brian, if you recall, that wasn't a vote that we did. That was actually just a letter of consensus. Um, Correct. Hi, Mike. This is Stephen. Hey, Stephen. Mike? Welcome back. Sorry. Hey. Uh, something happened to my Wi-Fi, and I'm out in the driveway. Okay. Yeah. I know okay. it was going too well for you, Stephen. It was going too smoothly. <laughs> it, it was. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah. sighs> So we'll recircle back here. We just started talking about the har harbor dredging permitting and you were frozen when we went to you. Um, but I know you had gone to Nancy to look to see if we could use the money that was already approved for the comprehensive dredge permit. And I told them that she had gotten back to you and said that that would be permissible. Correct, that is permissible. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm just finishing wrapping up the pilot project um, and, you know, get the marinas open, and my plan is to, you know, get an RFP out as soon as you know that happens, which is in, you know probably ten days. Um, back out on the street for the harbor dredging, and I'm going to do it in two ver request two versions. One would be the inner harbor, and then one would be the inner and outer harbor. Uh, I also spent. Um, I think I spoke to you about the box of permits that I found or that was dropped off. Um, yeah. An old um, uh, dredge permits I went through and I found quite a bit of um, permits from the past of different areas of the harbor. Um, the only area that I was not able to really find was uh, down over near the Lobstermen's Association um float and over by the town pier but there was a lot of uh dredging that came in the coal parkway area um, not throughout the whole marina um, but a fair amount of it and um i know we had permits for the maritime center or we still have parts of them in place the uh, orders and conditions are still in place because i had those extended um, so I would be able to provide uh, old permits to any of the consultants or the consultant that wins the job um, to move forward with the project. Hello, did I lose you again? No, you're here. No, nope. we're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Um, any questions from? The board or the audience on that? Nope. We're good. All right. Um, with that, getting past that, we're looking at the small vessel management and access. Uh, the Daves have the updates on that um, from our last. Yes, yeah, so somewhat of an update. Um, you know, ongoing conversations with Frank Snow, uh, he actually said, since they're on board, we don't need to meet with them. Um, he actually sent me some pictures I could show you, you know, of his thoughts of a rack system at the uh, conservation park. He was suggesting not mounted into the ground racks, just sort of A-frame racks. Uh, he sent me a couple different pictures from where he's seen in his travels, kayak racks. And I communicated, I said, Dave, we have, I mean, Frank, we have no skin in this design game. We couldn't care less what kind of rack was there. We just were suggesting a low line wood rack because it's more natural looking than a aluminum rack. And he agreed with that. Um, he just thought, the idea of a wood rack standing on the ground would be more flexible if they decided they wanted to move them at one point or move them around a little bit. 
So now I think the decision for us would be, you know, we've quote unquote spearheaded this project to increase access, safe access to our waterways. You know, where do we go from here? Um, you know, Dave is, Dave Sinkowski has reached out to Votech and they're not available till at earliest mid fall. You know, the kids go back to school in September, you know, they might be able to get it done this fall. Uh, but, you know, how do we get kayak racks constructed? You know, we're, a, we're an advisory board. You know, we don't want to go out there and put them together ourselves. We have to decide, number one, how much money would we not donate, but put towards this project? And then how do we ask, you know, Steve, basically, to, you know, cause these to be built? That's where we are. He just wants to see the design before it gets built. That's what conservation's position is. Maura's got her hand up. Mike, up. can I ask you a question? Oh yeah, sure, Maura, go ahead. Sorry. Um, Dave, did we, what about uh, Eagle Scout projects? Because in the past, a lot of the Eagle Scouts have done different smaller projects like that for us. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't even know how to contact them and I'm more than willing to do that and that's fine. I can get that for you. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's troop seven. Okay. Troop seven. Yeah. I mean, maybe you could forward uh, Mara some of the photos that um, Frank Snow wanted to to go after as far as right. design. Yeah, right. send them over to me, and I'll um, I'll copy. You know, make sure I put your emails on there as well, yeah. and I can forward it over to the troop leader. Right, and that's great. And, and as a group, we have to decide, Mike. You know, um, are we willing to suggest to Mora and, 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 you know, and, and town administrator, we want to take, I'll throw out a number, $5,000 of waterways money to construct, you know, two kayak racks down at Conservation Park. Do we have to have a vote on that? Or, you know, does Steve have that money in his budget or not? You know, can it, you find it? It's the end of the season and, you know, it would have to be after July 1st because, you know, it, you go to any town department, they, there's nothing left this time of year. I mean, we right, still have so, to open the marinas and get other things going. Um, and we got to gear up. Right. So that, Do you know how are, much I'm, they are, Dave? No idea. But I can show you some pictures the frag sent me. They're, it's wood, so. Yeah, we, yeah we, we've, we've gone through, you know, some of the materials. It's, it's under a, a $1,000 a rack. But it just, we, we figured, it, you know, 5,000 would, would be three times what you need. Just Counting some labor. We don't know. Right, what I mean. right labor, sure. Yeah. So we don't know more, but okay. know, I, could sh I could share my pictures if you want, but it's not important, I don't think, because we I mean, don't care if, about if, the design. But if, if, if the uh, Eagle Scouts were to do this for us, and then it would just be the material. It would be right, under and 5, coffee 000. and donuts for them. Right. It would be <laughs> material. All I would say is we could more. Do Yep. More, uh, it might be something that Jim's the town administrator, if he has it in his budget, just to uh, start these. Sure, that's what I'm doing right now, too. Great minds. Thank you. Alert. Yep. Thank you okay. very much. And, and this could be a start of things because Frank was also very, again, we're waterways, right? We want to increase safe access. Dave has talked to some friends. I know people that would love to store their kayak on Museum Beach again or, or somewhere around the harbor, not to have to you know, take their 15 year old with the kayak on their, on their roof of their car and their station wagon and drive it there and pick them up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the kids can ride their bikes down there, take the kayak and go safely. And we'll talk about that next. But, um, you know, he's talking about racks at Museum Beach, racks somewhere in, in, in mine it. Uh, you know, he'd like to, conservation is on board with this process of, you know, we're calling it safe access. It is easier access to the waterways, which is a, obviously a threat on safety if we have more kayaks in the, in the harbor. But, um, you know, we like the idea of at least starting this as a pilot. At you know, which two, which two areas you've decided on? Is it conservation and where would the other locations? No, we're just talking about Conservation Park to start. Then we were going to do the Maritime Center, but when we looked at it, all the boats were still there. So right now is a good time to go down and walk it and talk to Steve about parking and all that. We were talking about maybe two racks at the Maritime Center too. We're talking about maybe a dozen kayaks each spot right now, Maura. Okay. 
Dave, I don't think we should abandon the Maritime Center in the first no, round. I think we should do the Conservation Park as one and at least one over near the Maritime Center somewhere. Okay, Maybe I mean, again, these racks are relatively inexpensive the way he designed them. He's talking yeah. about two A-frames, that's it. Um, right, with, yes. with six kayaks each on them that take yeah. up maybe each one, maybe 10, maybe one parking spot each. And yeah. so we need to agree if that's takeable from the Maritime Center parking lot. They're very, very low tech solutions, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, that's good though. You don't want yeah, to we shouldn't have banded it. I agree, I agree, Howie, but uh, for sure we got the spot and the room and the, you know, at, at conservation. And if these Eagle Scouts, you know, this is a two day project for two good Eagle Scouts, I would think, to put together these kayak racks. Um, so it's not a massive, you know, building a bridge type of project. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, we should have enough. We should have enough uh, space at the Merit at, over at the Marine Park, uh, given when we constructed that we provided for 185 parking spaces because we had to have uh, two parking spaces per slip. Since then, the uh, the bylaws had changed, and I believe it's down to one, one to one. So it would seem to me we we made a provision to 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 have enough spaces that we're yeah. technically not using, so. Right, so we could just put them near that dumpster, we would think, right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect, so I think the next step is more, if you can get me or Dave that, that information, we can, we can- Can you send me the photos, Dave? Sure, I will, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's great, Dave. Yeah, yeah. making progress, right? Slowly but surely. Yeah. Not, not, not in our primary function was to get more revenue in from the, not, you know, Dave Dauphine's point of view, get more revenue in from the non-paying right. users of our waterways. So yeah. this doesn't do that at all, except maybe $125, whatever we decide per kayak, you know, which doesn't add to a significant amount of money. No, it doesn't, yeah. It may, may pay for the rack in a couple of years. <laughs> right, well, hopefully one year. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, not on that. Okay. The Jericho ramp parking, which is the next item on the agenda. I thought I talked about it last time. Anybody else can chime in, but I think that is one, a, a non-starter in a big way because okay. again, in all our research, it shows any revenue generated by the state run ramp would need to be used for maintenance of the ramp, which I don't think needs a lot of maintenance unless it's a, a bow's house for $50 a month or something, um, or $100 a month, whatever it is. Um, I don't think that's worth it. Other people may have different ideas, and Dave obviously will, but uh, to me, that's a non-starter. I, I would just say this, Dave, I have a different idea too. I, 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 I'm just repeating what I've been told, but um, apparently the 3A Marine was, they're sold out of boats again this year for the second year in a row. If you, if you drive by Driftway Auto Sales, you'll notice they don't sell cars anymore. They replaced all the cars with boats. Right. So the, the growth is gonna keep coming. And as far as having um, uh, uh, a business model there to raise money from parking, it may not make perfect sense at this moment, but where the town is growing, it, it will. So I, I think it's something we, we should do and um, it is a way to bring bring revenue, and we know we know Marshfield's been doing it for years already, and there should be a way to take that money. We, we just we just got done arguing about a low end porta potty. Maybe we could have a nice one with lights, you know, um, uh, a, a couple picnic tables. I, I don't know, but I'm I'm sure this group will find a way to spend the money. Well, I, I think just that again in response, it's. More, I think it's almost like Pier 44 building. You're restricted on what you could do with the money. We love the money. We have a lot of uses for the money. But again, unless I've misread what I've read or misunderstood what I've heard, the money generated from that ramp has to be used on that ramp. So, I don't think it's very gray. Well, I, 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 I think you can find ways to use it on the ramp. I mean, whether you, whether you add a, a stairs on the side so some of, with, a, with a kayak can walk down and not walk on a slippery ramp, I, I don't know. But I'm, I'm sure we can find investments. You look at it, it, it is not a very pretty spot. 
um, it, it could be optimized. What ramp are we talking about? The Jericho ramp. Jericho ramp. Oh, back there. Yeah, we were talking about you know generating fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a year by charging for parking there, and that'd be great if it could get used for assistant harbor masters to help manage the people that just park their boat there. They come from Norwell and and Quincy and and everywhere else you know uh, in the state to uh, to launch their boats, but they don't pay anything uh, to help us fund our you know our our harbor master's office and. We help, certainly they bring some revenue into town through the use of restaurants and all that, but the Harbor Master's Office is having to help manage the, those people's use of our waterways with no revenue compensating for their usage. Dave, you know, I had conversations with Marshfield, with Mr. DeMeo, Harbor Master DeMeo, probably a couple months ago on that. And it's a pretty big revenue number that he has down there. Now, granted, he's got more parking spaces than we have. Um, but I can't believe he's taken all that money and putting it back into the parking lot of the ramp itself. Oh, well, no, I mean, they're, they're putting all new walls in. They're, they're, they're moving the ramp from, from one area to another. They're changing the entire structure of that area. Yeah. And, and so it's, and, and by the way, good for them. They're, as their needs are changing, so is that space. We've got a chunk of land that's been the same for probably 50 years. And, and, and to look at it and say there's nothing we could do better, I think is probably not, not the right answer. Mike. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm still working on, on a, some, some of the details on that. I put a, an email into Fishing and Boating Access yeah. to, get, to get the answers. So any money derived from parking and or launching can be used on the facility. So it's not restricted to just the ramp. Well, I meant the facility, right. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think what I would ask is anybody here on this take a ride through Jericho parking lot. Um, it, it, it could qualify as an MDC uh, maintained facility the way it looks and the way it's it's been kept. And it's just as I talk to different people in town about different projects, the biggest thing, and maybe Mara can, can chime in on this, is we use CPC money for projects. And the biggest gripe that I hear from anyone is there's no money to maintain it. And, and right. they're stretched thin on the maintenance. And this here is a twenty-five to $40,000 a year revenue project that helps those people using the harbor pay into the system. They shouldn't, you know, and I and I, I have been very vocal about about appeasing non-paying users and then having them put tax us the services that they need in order to do boating. And I and I wish it was all free for everybody, but it's not. And it's it would be kind of crazy to think. There's a number of things that can go on with this with this area. There's not only maintenance but improvements. You could have you could have a a, a bouse house far better than a plastic shed. Um, that, that has better facility for, for, for all aspects of boating, including the handicapped uh, portion. Um, maintenance of the area, beautification of the area, it's, a, it's really a diamond in the rough and it, and it needs, we talk about Pier 44, but we're overlooking something we already own and have and it could be, there could be picnic benches up there. There could be more, more use uh, attractive that's to each person to decide, but I think there's, there's a whole lot that can be done there. There's 55 parking spaces there. There's, there's place for a kayak rack if you wanted to do it. There's all kinds of, there's all kinds of things. It's just, it's just pulling all the pieces together. So I, I want to know exactly from fishing and boating access from the guy, tell me what can and can't be done. Whether hey, Dave, I'm all, I'm all for that, but that is a little different mission than I think we started with. We could put a, permanent building like Kenny Duvall did for a nice bathroom there if if we had the money and wanted to. So improving that facility is a is a new objective. If we get that money, we could certainly do that. I'm not, I thought, I'm not, say, I'm not saying imp I'm not saying improve it, but but in other words, you, you need to you're gonna maintain a facility. The facility is not 
is not maintained and it becomes who pays for the lights, who pays for the thing, who does this. Let's get it all under one. Let's let's have the opportunity to sit down and put it under one umbrella. This is what's generated. This is what's spent. This is how it's maintained. And and maybe maybe it can be benefit. Maybe there can be a benefit to it, an overall benefit to it. And whether it's uh, and, and those are those are those are beyond my horizon right now. It's about the logistics of it, number one. Yeah. Number two is you, um, you know, as we started on this project about, let, let, you know, again, go back to the, the police t getting money from the budget to cover things. Okay. How do we, how do we recover that money? Are we going to charge people that already pay into the system or are we going to explore other avenues? The kayak racks are a great thing. And, and I've always been on board with that, but what does it generate when you're inviting another activity into the harbor, is it covering its cost? Is it covering its expenses? And so those are the things that go on. So I think I, I would implore anybody to drive through, and I'm not blaming anybody for anything. I'm not calling anyone out on, on the lack of, of, of maintenance on the place. Take a drive through and take a look at it. Um, and, and I think if, and I took a bunch of pictures the other day, and, and again, I, I'll, I'll forward those out to everybody, but it's, it's, it's an, it's an important and invaluable part. Matter of fact, just not the other day, they bagged a the guy down there setting traps into a closed area for shell fishing and he goes there because it's a free place to go. So now, you know, is that one out of, I don't know how many, but that's an, an access point that goes unregulated and it's creating uh, down the road, you're inviting this type of, you know, unchecked activity. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, isn't that a state it's a state ramp though right that's a state that's uh, a state boat ramp and just so you, everyone knows that um all the dollars that the state invests into that boat ramp and they're in the project process of doing a uh, com complete do-over of that boat ramp uh they're in the design stages now because i've actually met with the people from uh, Toth Engineering out there, um, they require X number of parking spots for every dollar spent in the ramp or on that boat ramp. And it's part of the contract that the uh, town of Situate entered into with the state. So to build things or to you know take back parking spots and build a, a bathroom or a bath facility, uh, you still have to go back to the state and find out if they're willing to give up their spot, their parking spots. Well, right. maybe what we should do is couple this improvement with, um, you know, the Board of Selectmen right now is looking at the, the uh, Pier 44, and I do think it's going to move more in the direction of being a visitor center, a park, and really beautifying that area. Uh, which will give public restrooms, hopefully, right to that area as well. Kind of check that box off. Um, yeah, it's adjacent to the Jericho Road ramp area, but maybe it's also an opportunity for um, some of us to meet with the state and combine these projects. So it's one um, effort to beautify the area. Because I agree, you know, with all of you, it all all needs to be cleaned up. So, so, so and, I, and I agree with you, Mara, on that. It's, it's about pulling all this together, and the conversation hasn't been had, and I'm glad we're having it. But just, just in regards to fishing and boating access, it says here that the fishing and boating access manages, const, manages the construction, repair, and operation of state boat ramps, canoe and car top launch sites, parking areas, and approach roads. It oversees facility design and construction, which is usually done by a private contractor. FBA funds are also used to construct fish piers and purchase shoreline areas. Nothing about maintenance, nothing about uh, about any of that stuff. And that's where we're, we're struggling on all of these projects. I don't care where you go in town, we can build it, but can we take care of it? And the revenues that would be brought in, however it's determined, could go into the maintenance of that and go into that um, that facility. So again, I'll keep working on my end of it to come up with some more of those um, answers, but I'd like to have um, somebody from Fishing and Boating Access perhaps uh, come to the next meeting and, and just explain 
firsthand what 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 they see what they see at, as I went over a few months ago the out of town that that take care of that stuff. So, Dave, that's great. Just just let me know. And the other the only other comment I have is really kind of regarding parking is that Marshfield and I think you guys some of you guys know this already. They have um, I think someone referred to it as an ATM where you kind of go up and put your card in and get a ticket. A ticket to put in your windshield of your car. There yep. you go. Right. He's showing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a that's a six thousand dollar investment for a yes. for a twenty for a first year twenty five thousand dollar return. Yeah. So to, I was just going to say, if it's six, I think DeMeo told me it's a little bit more if you put a wireless card in it to do the transaction right. stuff. But either way, if, if it really is a twenty thousand dollar return each year, then yeah, you're paying for that in less than a year for that and then you're not worrying about having to have Harbor master people go over and issue you know no because I, I, and and I'll agree what I what I what I envision is is that you build a partnership between the land based police mm -hmm. that that's part of that's part of the you know that's that's part of what it is it's it's part of co yeah. uh, of of completing the circle and if you have to you know I, Again, we talked about the commercial aspect of that ramp and the boat ramps and, and everybody using those. Is it per boat or do they pay for the year? Most of these guys pay a yearly fee to the town. It's a stipend. Again, you're not going to build anything huge, but but it would it would be a benefit, an overall benefit to the town. And the fact is we've spent a huge amount of time and money on walking paths that go from conservation park all the way to the lighthouse and this is a stopover for people and it's and it's it, it's uh, good. literally yeah. a disaster i mean it really is and it just it's just it, it needs maintenance and that's what it's lacking and this is a way to create that and all i'm doing is i just want to bring it to the table and you guys can bring it to the selectman but it's oh. it's an option and i think it's i think it i think it's far worth vetting it out to find out the pros and cons to it yeah. And, it can be yeah, and I, I think, uh, too, uh, tying the four, Pier 44 into it, I mean, there's a lot of extra parking over there that if the lines were set up for uh, cars and trailers, you could charge for it. So you could, I don't know, maybe double the size of that parking lot and, and gain I, revenue from it. I like to handle the 55 we got right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think David Daphne brought up an excellent point about having the state come in maybe at our next meeting and explain what options and what they do and how does it work? I mean, I don't know, David, if you knew before this discussion tonight that there's some re-engineering being considered on that I, ramp. I did. It's, oh. it's a surprise to you and it shouldn't be a surprise to us. And, and to Laura's point, we have to start tying these various aspects of the state together, not just doing one-offs. Uh, and and really I think what's important, what, yeah, what's important too, Howie, is is perhaps the design that we have there is we've outgrown it and maybe there should be floats down the middle and two lanes where you can actually yeah. launch get off your boat and walk up versus the gymnastics you have to go through about getting your boat to the ramp getting up the ramp up the pier back down the ramp to your car get your car off the ramp it does the, yeah there's i'm a sure that there's a better way <clears throat> yeah. Why don't we end when we do this? Um, I think we need to pull together a group. I want to make sure that Kyle Boyd is also pulled in because he's our director of planning and development now. So he has access to a lot of different grants that are out there because this certainly, I think, would fall. It could, it could check off a number of different boxes and it's worth bringing him in too. You're right. We have to start to consolidate some of the resources more. I couldn't agree with you more. We've got some ideas here. Yeah. I mean, when we went to the ramp that was that we have now was updated, what, maybe 20 years ago, we were all set to spend Waterways money to do that improvement. And, and the uh, access board came and said, no, 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 put your wallet away. We're taking care of it. Uh, and they did, and they rebuilt it on their nickel. So I think there's ways to do this, but we've got to consolidate these resources. Otherwise, yeah. we're just chasing our tail, I think. Yeah. yeah, and I think we can. I think we can invest in the infrastructure, again, and maintain it in a better way, and make it inviting and user friendly, and also recover those expenses. I think it connects. It connects everything that we talk about, or has been talked about at Waterways and other meetings on other projects 
that the town has in it. it it's, I agree. It's, it's so still worth. Someone, it's still worth. Someone want to reach out to the state, the appropriate person from that, Dave? I, I I made a call the other day and I'll follow up with it. Okay, and just let me know. And if we can get okay. them to come on to the meeting, then I'll I'll put that on the agenda for next month. I think it would be great to talk and understand that a little bit better, and that would give us a better idea of what we can and can't do. And yeah, and I'll ask that not only not only what we we're talking about doing, but what do they have planned for us? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, appreciate, I appreciate the gift, but can I use it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just a, 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 sorry, one last comment. Uh, just a reminder, the conversation we had the last meeting uh, at Marshfield, DeMeo is moving the ramp. He's moving the seawalls. These are huge investments, and it's all state matching money. So the, the state's quite happy to help us improve it. We just need to tell them what you want to do, and the money is there. But you have mm -hmm. to be looking for it. I don't right. This, uh, that to me yeah. it's a no-brainer. More and that's where Kyle can help out too. Okay. Yeah. And Kevin Cafferty actually. So a couple people, a couple folks to bring in because Kevin does a lot of the the seawall. You know, some of the there are different departments that give you different grants. So maybe we find out from Mike DeMeo where he got the money for the ramp. I'll reach out to Mayo on that. Probably, and, probably, and I'm and I'm sure I'm sure Stephen has contacts too. I I don't I don't need, think we need to defer to to Marshfield on on projects in Ohio, but I also know that he has the rev, he has the resources and the connections and the people to talk to, and maybe and maybe perhaps before it goes to the next waterways meeting, there should be a a a, a, a meeting before the meeting that just. Just view the site, view the area, see what it is. Some there's going to be some. I, I have some thoughts. Other people have thoughts before you get into letting them tell you what they're going to do. Um, yeah, I think that might be worthy. And again, this 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 little project is going to balloon out into something that we probably didn't anticipate um, in the end. But hopefully, it's it benefits all in the harbor. All right, good. Man, I got beat up on my non-starter comment. Huh? <laughs> you said right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll circle back with you, Dave, on that too um, before the next meeting, so we can kind of figure that out too and try to visit there. So, yeah. All right, um, are we good to move along, Dave's? Yeah, I mean, the last thing you had on your agenda was the sticker program, and all I said last month, and I really encourage it again. I think Steve dropped off again, but uh, we need to market the heck for the safety of all the kayakers and paddle boaters and for helping out the harbor masters and assistant harbor masters and Coast Guard and Citroën police and all that is push, push, push this sticker program. I mean, yeah. I don't know how to market it, but Franny McMillan, was, he's on this call now too. And we'll talk also about this uh, first weekend in June process, but yeah. I think it's a great thing and every kayak in the, in the harbor should have a sticker on it. It's that simple. All right, good. I, I, I'm just leaving that on there as a placeholder. So, you know, Dave, yeah. just like you identified three, three projects you guys were looking at and we said right. we work on one at a time. So right. we just kind of left that as a placeholder, you know, to, right. But again, okay. here we come at the beginning of the season. So I'm hoping Steve has thousands and, Fran McMillan has thousands of uh, these stickers to give out everywhere, yeah. not just at the Harbmaster's office. Good. All right, Mr. Kelly, unless unless someone else has comments from the audience, I'm ready to move to the next item. Thanks, Brian. Mike. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So quick, a quick uh, update. Uh, we were waiting on the mooring numbers to come in, the mooring fee revenue, just to remind everybody, since 2014, so seven years ago, this thing has swung approximately $20,000 every other year. Odd years was up, even years were down. So last year we finished at 94,000 and change. We're budgeted this year for 95 as a conservative number. We're hoping obviously for that number to be higher at which point we'll have two consecutive years of information being put in one system versus straddling multiple systems that we've had where we could never reconcile the data between the even and odd years. 
However, as of today, we the last day everything's due is the 15th, so it's 10 days out. As of today, uh, in communications that Nancy and I, Nancy Holt, that is, back and forth, um, Munis is showing $90,302. However, Ellen has uh, $94,683 because she's got 19 outstanding invoices for $3,300 and a few hundred bucks uh, that was not yet entered into Munis. So that is, we seem to be sitting right on top of the budgeted number, 95,000, but not on the 114, $115,000 that has been historically happening in 19, 17, and 15. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is gonna be a to be continued story. Um, once we close the books on the 15th, give it a few days to filter through uh, Munis, then we'll have the numbers that we have for this year. Obviously, we certainly hope they're larger. If they're not, then it kind of puts us in a bad situation to try to go back and do um, some sort of uh, um, examination as to why there was this swing. Because whether it's Ellen, Nancy, other folks in uh, accounting finance within the town systems, nobody can, including Stephen, nobody can put their finger on why there's been this swing. So. This is going to be a, a to be continued right now, Mike. Yep. Okay. So bottom line is that we're kind of at the average this year, right? So we're at the low mark, which is we, we, okay. what what we budgeted. So we'll at least hit the budgeted number. Yep. Um, and as everybody knows, for twenty three, uh, we're tight on money. So uh, we hope that uh, um, I'm sorry for twenty two. Mm -hmm. We're twenty one. For twenty two, we're tight on money. Um, we're hoping that obviously that we get some kind of uplift, uh, at a minimum. So thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any questions from anyone on that before we move along? Nope. All right. Pretty clear. Um, item D that was on here was really just a update since our last meeting. We, uh, at town meeting, the budget was approved and the bylaw changes were approved. So um, that that is done and in place. We also, since the last meeting, did that letter to uh, the town administrator regarding um, the consensus that we had last meeting regarding dredging in the Salt River. So I did send that letter off. So there's just an update on that. So um, that was it on that section for old business, unless you guys had anything else that you want to just recircle back on. All right, great. We're, we're getting there, guys. New business. Uh, Laura? Oh, I was just going to update Dave Sinkoski. He sent me a, a note, and um, <clears throat> we did send a letter to the DOT. They asked us to outline the request for the parking signs down by um, – the, you know, the, the pull off down on 3A near Rote Marine. Um, so we're just following up with them to uh, see what that request is. So it's in process. So hopefully we'll have it uh, by the season. Right. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Nice job, Maura. Dave. Dave emails me weekly. Reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could deny it. <laughs> Uh, under new business, uh, we just really had a couple things here. So uh, Mass Maritime Trade Stay Local Program. Um, Howie, if you don't mind, I'll let you just talk about that for a minute. And just We just figured we'd talk about that as a group. Yeah, the Mass Marine Trades Association has a program called uh, Stay Local. And it's to encourage boaters uh, for, at our marinas, for instance, to go to other marinas within the Commonwealth visit with them and, and try to get people moving about. Uh, we were involved with this program three or four years ago. And uh, what happens is a boater from our marina, let's say goes into Boston, goes to Constitution Marina, and they offer them a discount for overnight uh, dockage. Uh, and it depends on how many boats, the more of a discount they get. So it's kind of an interesting program. But what's, inter what's really uh, changed here a little bit is the Marine Trades has received a grant from the state uh, for marketing purposes of this program. And uh, I, I was reading it and, and it just seemed like something we should be engaged in where we might be able to pick up some free marketing 
to, to tra attract uh, transient boaters that come to town. And if they're coming from another marina that, that is also in this program, uh, which, which gets some pretty good press, uh, you know, it might be, might be a good marketing uh, tool for us. So that, that's kind of the long and short. I think it's short money to be involved. I think it's a couple of hundred bucks and they produce a card uh, that says they're, we're a part of the boat local program. Uh, but I think the real benefit is the marketing that goes on behind the scenes and online as people want to move about these other marinas. So the cost to, let's say, situate or would be is only several hundred dollars. Is that what it is to join Mass Marine Trades? I think so. Stephen, do you know what the what it was? It wasn't very much money. We're already a member of Mass Marine Trades. Okay. Yeah, but we're not part of this program. We have to sign up separately for this particular program. Yeah. Uh, to get our name uh, on their website. Uh, so as boaters are looking for places to go, they, they take advantage of the program. And at the same time, if we do that, then we discount them coming to us too, right? So Yes. Between, yeah. between 10 and 20% slip fee. So is it a sliding thing between 10 to 20% or is it a fixed? No, it's based on the number of boats. I think it's a 10% discount if one to four boats, boats of the, uh, are going to uh, Boston, for instance. And if it goes five to 10 boats, it goes to 15% and so forth to the max of 20% discount. It's just a, a tool to encourage boaters, boaters from Situate to try the other marinas and likewise for them to come to us. It's a marketing opportunity for us to let transient boaters know that, that we have this benefit. Uh, and there's a little marketing that goes on behind that to say who we are and what we do. And it just, it's kind of like free advertising. Right. Yeah, it seems like an interesting program to try to drive more uh, transient boaters to us, right? Yeah. Situate, yeah. Yeah. I think any time we can take uh, advantage of some marketing of the mm -hmm. harbor on, at somebody else's nickel here is, is, might be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Get them to come to town, get them to spend some money in town and, and enjoy the benefits of our harbor. Stephen, any in input on that? I don't know if you have any experience with those guys or. Um, I have not had much experience with it. I know when, we, when I started here, they had it. We had the cards up in the office, um, but there wasn't a whole lot done with it. Um, and we, you know, we were short, um, you know, we were pretty tight two years ago on revenue, you know, on funding. So we kind of, you know, just didn't fund it for that one year, but we went back to them. You did, yeah, yeah. Thoughts, is it an interest to others in the board? Do you think it would make a difference if we do that or? Oh, go ahead, Ryan. Sorry. Yeah, I certainly think it's a good program for no other reason than we're marketing it on whether or not somebody decides to come to us that particular time. It puts Situate in their mind um, as a place to visit. That's one side. Uh, the other side is, uh, Stephen, I don't know if you're projecting your DACWA revenues uh, for the year, but I cannot imagine that we're looking at a significant amount of money um, since everybody that is coming wouldn't be using DACWA, obviously, instead it'd be a rather small percentage. So um, if you're a small percentage of a small percentage is what I'm trying to say. I don't think it would cost a lot of money from a revenue perspective uh, for us to try this program to see. It's not so much driving revenue for us, the waterways, but it's going to be driving uh, visits to the town by other boaters. So I think it's a great idea. So I, my suggestion is to have Waterways vote on it. Are you making a motion, Stephen? No. This would be the first in your career. I don't make motions and I don't vote unless I have to. <laughs> right. I'll have you want to make hey, a vote. This is the Waterways Commission. <laughs> Do you guys, anyone else have any other feedback on it or questions on it, including the audience?
Maura? Or I'm, just curious, I'm just curious, um, what, what's, I think it's extremely beneficial from a marketing and a spend What's the risk? How many slips or moorings like would that discount apply to that we typically would? It would it would discount. Uh, we have like uh, five transient slips. Oh, okay. But if somebody leaves for the like if Howie leaves for the weekend, then his tr slip becomes a transient slip. He's supposed to notify me when he goes and let me know when he's coming back. And, and if they I show you this card or whatever, that's where they get the discount. That's where they get the discount between okay. 10 and 20%. Okay. And do we have to, as a commission, decide on what that percentage is so it's consistent? No, I think mm -hmm. how we said that if it's one to four boats, it's 10%. If it's like three to seven boats, it's 15. You know, like if a group of people, a group of boaters go together. Oh. Got it. Thank you. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, Howie. No, I think that's how it works. This isn't about the money. This is a, a cheap program where we get some marketing exposure yeah. for virtually nothing. Yeah. I don't uh, have any issue with it. I just, you know. No, yeah, I was just curious. I want to know, want to know what, you know, Waterways thinks. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we really need to do a vote on it unless you want us to do a vote, Stephen, on it. Whenever, you, whenever you guys are discounting anything. I'm sorry, what's that? Whenever you discount anything. <laughs> he wants it lower documented. The, yeah. Lower the okay. rates, I want it documented. That's fine. Does anyone want to take a stab at, at, um, at a motion? Can I just ask you a question? Just. Yeah, go ahead, uh, David. Yeah. Um, not ex I don't need an exact number, Stephen, but on, on transient slip revenue on average, is that is that a ten or a twenty thousand dollar a year revenue source? I think it was over twenty last year, wasn't it, Brian? It was a pretty good year. Yes, yes it was. All right. So if you had if you had a twenty thousand, let's say you had an average twenty thousand dollar transient slip year, and you're and you're discounting fifteen percent, that's a it's it's a cost. It's not free, but it's a cost to the town of three thousand dollars to be involved in the in that program but it's only for people that are coming from those marinas that okay. are involved in that program right it's, it's not so everybody it's like, a, it's like a triple a it's like a triple a discount yeah thing. they have to like, be okay. you, you have to be in constitution marina have your card and come to situate to our yeah. marina and show your card got it okay so it's not everybody it's, so just, it's not across the board no okay no i was just looking at a at a, at a thing correct Th that's correct Correct, Howie? Yes, yes, that's exactly the way it works. And, you know, here we are, we, we wanna uh, crank up uh, DACWA, for instance, because that's, uh, that, that's all about marketing too, and getting people to come here and paying for their uh, transient slip on an automated basis. This is an add-on to that, and I just, uh, I just think we're missing an opportunity with transient boaters of any description to come to our beautiful harbor and, and leverage the downtown that we have. It's a terrific, um, bonus for everyone. So, uh, you know, I'll make the motion that uh, we we install the uh, Mass Marine Trades uh, Boat Local Program uh, for this upcoming year. Second. Okay, so we have a second of the motion and Alicia, were you able to grab the motion? What was the, um, made a motion to enter, enter enter into the Mass Marine Trade enter. Okay. Boat Local Program this season. Stay local program. Stay local program for, for this season. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Great. So we'll do a roll call vote as we do here, right? Um, starting with Mr. Brian Kelly. Yes. And Howie. Yes. Dave Zinkowski. Yes. Dave Friedman. Yes. Craig. Yes. Mr. Moan, you will abstain likely, right? Yes. And I, <laughs> yes, I'm abstaining. Yes. And Mike Gibbons, I am a yes. I think that's everyone. So going forward, Stephen, you'll have to, uh, as a member of the Mass Marine Trade, you'll have to 
do whatever yeah. they require to sign up, which is pretty yep. minimal, and, and move the program ahead. No problem. Maura, I have a question. Maura? Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, it, this isn't anything I'd have to go to the selectmen for permission, you know, rates and things. I don't think so. Okay. That, hey, you heard it, folks. <laughs> okay. Double check, but I don't see why. No, I don't a, think I don't see why either, but I just, you know. I'll double check, but I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Maura. You're welcome. All right. Thank you all. We're going to move to opening of the harbor I put on there just so we could discuss this. It's the first uh, Friday event that was brought up at last meeting. I believe it starts on June 4th this year. And we had talked about trying to have uh, some people from the state come down. We were going to invite them down so that we could thank him for, you know, everything that they've done to help support us in our, our waterfront and, and uh, the products that we've done down here. And how, you know, you and I had talked about it the other day and you were going to get with Mr. Murray was the action item from the last meeting. Did you guys get a chance to get anything together on that? We weren't. We both ran into some issues that we had to take care of that we were unable to overcome. Okay. To accomplish. We're running out of time because June is coming so quick. Yeah. Um, but our initial reaction was, was not to do it in June anyway. It was really to do it sometime in the fall when we had less competition from COVID. And we might be able to enjoy uh, not only thanking them for the money, to improve the, the pilings and so forth, but also take advantage of the new fireboat that we have and let people know that these are some of the positive things that we're offering the patrons of the, the marinas. Yep. All right, so I'm fully in favor of it. I think the board was too, so we'll just uh, look to do that. I, For some reason, I was thinking we were coupling those together, so um, I'm fine. I think fine. that was the initial thought, Yeah, uh, Mike. So you are correct. I think that was the initial thought, but I think it yeah. got changed at some point. Yeah. And it works well, out better good. because then the railings will be up and every, you know, everything will be in order. For you. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, I'll look to attend that event on that weekend there. Cause I think it's kind of neat opening of the harbor and kind of get a little bit better um, understanding of it myself. I think, I think Fran was on earlier, but I don't see him on now, so. All right. Um, last item on here was really stuck in a new, new business, and I don't know the answer to the question, but I was thinking possibly June, you know, as things start to open up more, we might be able to meet in person versus Zoom. At least that would be my preference. I don't know. It would be you, nice. <laughs> what's that? I, I said it would be nice. It would be nice, right? Yeah. I talked uh, to Seth earlier before our meeting started. He said some of, and more you can confirm this, some of the smaller committees like ours um, have been possibly, you know, meeting in person. Yeah, I talked to uh, Jim and Drew Scheel about it as well. Um, I have to take a look at Drew's response. Drew is our director of health, Board of Health. Um, and the only risk that you run is that when you meet in person is managing the influx of um, the public joining because right. you want to make sure that whoever comes can socially distance. So right. um, I don't know, Seth, if you have anything else to add, what others are doing, but that's the yeah. only risk really right now. I will say that the groups that are meeting right now don't necessarily have uh, like a sort of uh, interest from the public in, in a, a manner following. I think that you, yeah. you, you probably would or you could. Um, so yes, no, you're absolutely right. That is something to consider with you. Um, right now, we, we do not have, we're still working on a way to figure out how to include the, like a virtual audience uh, public for public to participate with all of you still being in that same room. We, but I do not have a solution just yet for that. So, and I would so. say, you know, maybe the only room that you'd be able to use would be that large, um, the large room in the library, just because you do have public folks that would want to join you. Yeah. Um, 
not even the large conference room, but the large room. What do we call that large room, Seth? The big media room? Yeah, the, the community room. The community room. You'd probably have to use that room, I would suspect, because that's, you can spread out pretty well there. Okay. I'll, I'll look into that. I was kind of just trying to get a feel from the group. Are people interested in doing that, or would they more comfortable remaining doing the Zoom calls? So I'd be fine with it. Me too. I'd be okay in person. You would be, yeah. More. No way. You, know, you can't do both. I mean, I, I, I prefer in person, but you, if you could leave it where the public could still attend, uh, if, if they wanted to virtually. Yeah. The, either way, the public has to attend. They have to be able to attend one way or another. Right? That's a. I think that was what Seth was trying to accomplish was figure out a way that it can be done both ways. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's an overall. As he was saying, it is complicated. Yeah. You'd have a screen. That's an overall goal for all the committee and boards, just because we've all benefited really from these Zoom meetings to having greater outreach to the public. And we want yeah. to make sure we maintain that. Yeah, that is true. I mean, really, people can go back and review mm -hmm. the meetings and do all that stuff and mm -hmm. make it easier for people to see without having to attend live to an event. So, mm hmm. Hey, right. as a member of the public, um, I'm sorry, I'm Paul Manning from 64 uh, Moreland Road. Um, I think the benefit of Zoom is you can attend easily. Um, as a member of the public, I've actually had two of my COVID shots, and I, I think there is a larger number of people who are getting vaccinated, and the opportunity to meet in person is good. But it, it does add a logistical thing. I think that if, unless you can have Zoom, and meet in person would probably lose a few people, which would be a challenge. Agreed. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll look into it, um, you know, certainly in the next week or so and just to see if that's even an option for, for June and, I'll, you know, certainly get back to you guys in the meantime. So. Thank you. Anyone else with anything, uh, any walk-ins or anything? Else, otherwise we're kind of done with the agenda. Nothing. Quiet group. All right. Yeah. We get a motion to adjourn. So <laughs> moved. Under two hours. <laughs> I know, right? I'm breaking some records here. People can get hardest meeting I've had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and with with this, I hate to do this, but we do have to do our roll call vote uh, in the meeting. So. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Howie. Aye. Mr. Sinkowski. Aye. Mr. Friedman. Hey, Friedman. Aye. <laughs> he was thinking about that for a bit. Yeah, it was going to be a nay. <laughs> yeah, Craig. Let's continue. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Okay, you'll get an eye from him and an eye from me. Thank you guys very much. Maura, thank, you, thank you very much for everything tonight. Oh, thank you.